even have a ponytail. I have a tiny ponytail. Isn't that fun? Long time no see. Welcome back. Mainly to me. So today's video is going to be a discussion video. And it's been something in my mind for a while now, like a couple years. It's kind of been ruminating in the back of my mind. And it came up uh, in work and people were discussing it. Um, well, as a sort of different aspect to it, but it's it's something I want to put to other people because I'm really not sure how to feel about these things myself. So, I'm going to take you through sort of what, what I've seen and then I really want to know what you think as readers, as people who love books, as people who champion books and champion writers um, and like your favourite authors and stuff. How do you feel about two things, ghost writing and AI in writing and the overarching sort of question here is do you care who's writing your favourite books and your favourite stories? Should we care? Are there lines? Should there be lines? First one I want to talk about is actually ghost writing. Now, it was, it was like, I didn't know what ghostwriting was until like a few years back and I was, funny enough, I'm back there right now, um, I was trying to like make money online any way that I could and I got onto sites like um, Upwork, uh, which is where you kind of, you can make a profile and you can, people can put up random jobs if they want someone to build a website or write a script for something and you can get paid doing random things. Um, I was writing, well here's a here's an interesting part actually, I made some money, nowhere near enough, writing little 500 word uh, articles or like just filler content for like websites and stuff on like anything you can imagine, like boba tea, um, I know too much about those little balls in boba tea. Um, bonsai trees, how to grow bonsai trees. How to apply for disability in the United States. I'll never need to know that. Um, if you've ever read 500 words of crap on the internet, I may have written it. Weird. But what I noticed while I was on the site, I was like, I was desperate for money. Like I needed money to eat. Uh, again, right back there. I would like look up anything to do with writing at all and a lot of the time, and I still see it to this day, you would have people um, saying I want someone to write me a story or I want someone to write me an ebook and it almost hooked me so many times because I was like I can do that, like they want someone just to write them a generic uh, thing, whatever it is. And I would think, you know, I could do that. I need the money. I'll do that. But then I would stop for a second and I would think, wait, if I'm going to put any kind of time and effort, that is annoying. The f if I'm going to put any sort of time and effort into anything, into writing anything that can on any level actually be published, I want my name on it, like I want it, that's something that I've done, you know what I mean? So I kind of, I want to do it for myself. So I never actually got into like ghostwriting or anything. I know someone now whose uh, partner does it for uh, a website, I don't know, I don't even know what website they use, but the person has told me their partner does like, yeah, they've helped um, write a couple of science fiction short novels and stuff and and horror novels and um, help some people with like their autobiographies and stuff and I think in terms of autobiographies it's kind of a little bit less dodgy that's the word I'm going to use in my mind because it's like you know there are plenty of people out there plenty of celebrities or whoever who have uh, interesting lives but they may not be writers, they may not be good at putting it down on paper, so getting someone to help them write down the facts or the facts as they see it of their own lives, 
I think that's fine to have like an autobiography ghost written. When it comes to like fiction, it's a whole different kettle of fish. I would, even though I wasn't going to go for these things, I would still look into them and I would I would look at the, the specifications that these people wanted for, for certain jobs they had and it always made me feel a little bit uncomfortable because so much of it was people saying I, you know, I've published multiple books this way, I've published multiple collections of stories this way and I'm looking for another one and I, I needed to have this many specifications and a lot of them would be like if if we get on if you do well enough on this one then we might work together for like a prolonged period of time like you might become my ghostwriter or whatever i think i remember seeing one where someone had said that their they had a previous collection or something like won an award or something and it really makes me think anytime i see a book now or a a collection or anything I'm like they could have just paid someone to write that for them is that okay and how do I feel about that like if you were to find out that your favorite author or a story that you really loved in someone's collection and maybe you you've met this person maybe you you gotten the book signed and then you find out it was actually ghostwritten by someone else. They just paid a random person on the internet to write it for them and put their name on it. And you had told them like, oh, this story was great. It really reminded me of this. It made me feel these things. How would you feel about that? Because I don't, I don't, I'm not super happy about it. You know what I mean? And I'm not against the ghost writers they're not doing anything wrong, they're providing a service, they're getting paid for that service. But certainly if I, if I, if I was in a room with other writers thinking I was there with peers and I find out that one of them actually just paid other people to write for them, like that, it, that's not, that's odd. And because I'm yet again uh, broke, um, I, <laughs> because I, I literally Google like how to make money online, um, I keep getting ads and I was getting this ad on YouTube for a while, for like six months straight. It was driving me crazy and it was, it was mainly this, just this woman walking through like a beautiful, uh, forest in Hawaii or something and she never got to the pin point. She never got to the point. Uh, I tried watching one of her ads, one of the YouTube ads was like a 10 minute long ad once. Couldn't do it. Turns out, um, like the ad was all her saying, oh, I, I have this side hustle. I have this, um, what do they call it? Not static income, passive income, you know, where if I can teach you how to do this, I taught my mom how to do it. I taught my brother how to do it. And now we're all on holiday and it's great. I don't have to do anything. Turns out what, uh, she was doing was selling ebooks which from anyone in like the writing community and like a publishing perspective is a weird get rich quick scheme because actual good writers actual skilled people struggle to sell books and make money you know but this get rich quick scheme that she was gonna uh, teach people for a fee was to find someone, find a ghostwriter online, pay them a small sum of money to write an ebook for you. Uh, generally, it would be like a non fiction one, like some sort of technical book, like how to get people to write ebooks for you, probably, and then sell those. And it's like, you know, it's no money down, it's just making money because it's a, a digital product or whatever. And I would just see those ads and obviously the most desperate people who don't understand how difficult it actually is to sell books and stuff 
uh, might actually go for that and spend money on it and you know lose money but I was just sitting there like that's that's insane that can't work that obviously that doesn't work that doesn't work because there are people with good books out there who aren't selling it's weird it's this it's this ghost writing thing like you don't know especially these days and especially with like these digital product products and ebooks and stuff you don't know who's writing them and I just want to know how do people people feel about that and how would you feel if like a book like that won is it considered like plagiarism? It must be right. If you were to enter like a, a competition or submit to a magazine, in the submission guidelines they always say by like submitting your story to us you are saying that it's uh, your own original work. Is it against those guidelines or is it considered like plagiarism? to pay someone else to write it for you, like a ghostwriter. Oh, my shadow's creeping me out there. Eee. Is it against those guidelines? Like, if, if someone won a competition like that and then people find out that it was actually ghostwritten, would they be stripped of their prize? Or is it okay? It can't be okay, right? It can't. You can't use ghostwritten. Stuff and I, it, it, it must be weird. Like I've asked the person I know whose whose partner does it. I've asked them like, so a lot of people just want um, help to write a book for like vanity purposes. You know, they want to put down their life story or or something, and they just want to give it to their friends, whatever. But I've asked them and they said that yeah, they can like look up these books on Amazon and it's got someone else's name on it but they've written every single word and when I used to see job offers for these some of them could be incredibly vague like I just need a science fiction book of like this many words whatever some of them were very um, specific like I'll give you the outline uh, there was one I saw that somebody wanted someone to write like the story of how she met her boyfriend with all these specific things that they had done and stuff which was kind of sweet you know it's obviously just for her um, probably but yeah and it reminded me of I think correct me if I'm wrong I think it's Brandon Sanderson who my housemate has a few other books downstairs, but I saw an interview, I think it was Brian, Brandon Sanderson, where he was being interviewed in his house and he just had all these drawers in his office, so many drawers. And he said, and like everyone kind of knows this and it's fine, that um, he makes the outlines to loads of his books. He'll sort of fill in you know the plot points and the the main bits of it and then he'll sort of collaborate with another writer and they'll fill in the rest of it because he has the ideas for all of these books he, he can't f physically write every single one of these books because he has apparently like hundreds of books he has like multiple books being published every single year um he's like open about that he's not trying to pretend that he's writing every single word or anything people seem okay with that you know he's still um people are still reading his books people are still enjoying his books i'm assuming i've never read any of his stuff how do how do people feel about that how do brandon sanderson uh readers feel knowing that he didn't actually write every every word of it you know that it might just be um bits of his idea i know another way one of the reasons that I really started ruminating on this was because um, a while back I read, I found um, a secondhand copy of a book by V.C. Andrews and it was the prequel, I think, or sequel, I'm not sure, to the, the famous one, Flowers in the Attic. And when I was reading the back of it and stuff, I realised 
Oh, I looked up the author because I, I heard the name and I'd heard of Flowers in the Attic. And I realised that the book I was reading was published after she had died. And I was like, oh, that's weird. But it turns out that her estate um, had hired someone to write the rest of the books because she'd left loads of notes and they'd hired someone else to write the rest of those books so that they could be published which is like I don't know it's interesting it's at least transparent you know you you know that all of it wasn't written by the writer I do know I think I learned recently that Terry Pratchett specifically like destroyed the notes of any unwritten stuff he had he didn't want any of his stuff being posthumously uh, published after he died. I think he I think he had a bit of a slower decline so he kind of was able to you know make those decisions about his work. I don't know how VC Andrews died but I really wonder like I don't know if if I became a published writer would I want stuff I don't think I would I don't think I would. I write down loads of story ideas, like I'll show you my... Yeah, if you just look at like my notes app, you'll see like story idea, story idea, there's so many story ideas. I would kind of prefer, unless it was something really specific to me, like really, I don't know if it was one of my like, my darlings of, of a story idea, I would kind of want the rest of them just to be like... You know, if anyone else wants to take it and write it and it can be their thing, that's cool. Because, you know, an idea, like, these are only a couple of sentences long, you know. An idea isn't necessarily someone's work. So, yeah, that's... Those are my thoughts around... My jumbled, messed up thoughts around ghostwriting and who's writing the books and the stories we're reading. I just want to know, I want to throw it out there and ask, like, how do people feel about that? How do you feel about like a, a VC Andrews book that was had permission to be uh, written by someone else? How do you feel about people who are going onto sites like Upwork and paying people to write a story collection or a sci-fi novel or whatever so that they can sell it and say, look, I'm a writer, even though they haven't written it? How do you feel about these things? Because I don't know how to feel. I have very conflicted, confused feelings. I don't know. So that's the first, um, the first thing. The second thing I want to talk about is something that's affecting all types of artists in every industry, and that is AI. So this first came up for me. Um, it was in one of. Uh, I'm currently working at the Irish Writers Centre, and we have a staff meeting every week. And the first thing we do is like literary news, you know, if there's any uh, new books coming out or any competitions or anything like that, whatever. And one of the first meetings we had, um, it was just after an article came out, and I'll link the article below. An article came out where it was uh, loads of people, there was um, a huge data scraping, uh, data, data scraping, uh, in LA, I think, and loads of pirated ebooks were in it, like a hundred and ninety thousand or something. And there were some big Irish names that were in that as well. Uh, let me just see who those were. Colm Tobin is one. Um, Marion Keys, Sally Rooney, people probably know her. Anne Enright, Cecilia Ahern, uh, poet Vona Group. Gourke, Liz Nugent as well. All of these authors had their books uh, like scraped by this AI to teach it to write apparently. There's like all sorts of lawsuits and stuff uh, going on against Meta and whoever else about this now because like it's it's plagiarism, it's theft and I did learn recently that um, obviously it happens with AI generated images and stuff. By the way, why can't they do hands? What is it about fingers? Like I've seen so many pictures where I'm like that is 100% real until you look at the fingers. They can get so much detail and depth and expression and the face and the eyes and the hair and everything. 
but fingers just blows their mind. It's very strange. I don't know. I need to look into why that is. I then find out that um, the like visual artists, at least digital artists and stuff, are kind of fighting back against this. Like someone has created a um, what would you call it? An algorithm, a something that you can put over your digital art and it like because of the way that AI scrapes images it like tells them that the pixels are different so instead of it scraping a picture of a woman and then mixing up and making the AI woman it like comes out as a horse or something it's quite interesting but I I don't know if we would be able to do that with writing I, do, I don't think we would and it's brought up this sort of if you read the article, it's actually really interesting because the the writers in it, these Irish writers, have such different ideas on it. Some writers are using it just to generate ideas, like asking an AI, like, what can I do with this? And then they'll go away and write something. Liz Nugent, it's theft, but it's worse than that. It's not just theft of a book, but of my personal skills as a writer, honed over many years of writing and life experience. And that's one of the things is like, one thing you're told to do constantly in writing is to like craft your voice get your voice and it's the reason that like when Stephen King tried to write as um Richard Bachman like people immediately knew they read the story and they're like that's Stephen King we know who that is we know what he sounds like we know what, how he writes and like people spend years creating this voice and now this thing is faking it in some way. It might be doing it badly but it's still like, it's still copying them. And then you have a Joanna Walsh, um, she's also an Irish writer and she actually writes uh, with AI. She has co-written books with AI. She designed her own AI. She coded her own AI. Um, she apparently won the Markovic Award in 2021 for her project miscommunication.ie, an AI generative work funded by the Arts Council. She says she is happy for her work to be taken and used in AI. She thinks that like any technology it's it should be like a international like a collaboration between everyone. What she doesn't like is if the AI is created by Meta or whoever you know untrustworthy sources but that's who's doing it. I mean, no one else really has the resources or the the want to to steal all these things because other people are busy, you know, trying to live or or making their own art. It says that AI should be a an international collaborative state project for the benefit of everyone. Um, yes, everything should be that way. But it's not, it's just, it's not, it's not being used like that. It's not going to be used like that. So what do we do about it? How would you feel if you read a book that you thought, or you read a story and you thought it was by a particular author and it turned out it was just AI generated. It was just machine generated kind of a pastiche of like a collage of things they might have put together, they might have said, you know, just like a patchwork Frankenstein of, you know, Sally Rooney or something, like, how would you feel about that? Another writer, this is just, yeah, novelist and playwright Belinda McKeown, she also had her work in this particular data set. These sort of tech, massive tech companies and stuff, they've already, um, Gutted independent art scenes made it really impossible to be an independent artist, to live as an independent artist in many cities, so there is something just sort of predictably vile about novels being stolen essentially to train a system that we don't really know yet the extent to which it could wreak havoc on the planet and the world. And that's like, yeah. Like if, if these, if companies like Meta, uh, these are the people doing it like it's not for good we know that it was Colin Tobin um he 
he used ChatGPT and he said, write the first page of a novel by me, by Colm Tobin. He said it wasn't perfect, it wasn't right in some way, but there was something funny about it. There, was, there were interesting images in it that I have never used and maybe I wouldn't use, but it didn't seem wrong and I was surprised by it. So it's, it's weird, it's kind of like the uncanny valley. Like, would I have written this, you know, in another dimension or something? Like, it, like, yeah, it's odd. Like, people are reading these words and they're like, it kind of sounds like me. Like, maybe on a different day with different emotions or whatever, I would have written that, but I didn't. But you can still kind of recognize yourself in it. Very weird. Paul Murray, who, um, he was one of the runners up in the Booker Prize. Um, yeah, he is an interesting thing. So he's like, there's no large consciousness at work here. Large language models are just reproducing patterns. So it's very hard on the one hand to imagine ChatGPT producing a novel that was anything more than a series of cliches. And on the other hand, to imagine anyone wanting to read a book or look at a piece of art produced by a machine that didn't even know what it was doing. I think in, for a lot of readers, like that is true. Um, you want a good story, but you want there to be something behind it. You want there to be someone behind it. I think for like the, the pulp side of fiction of any genre, like maybe pulp horror, pulp romance and erotica, pulp science fiction even, I mean, this would really be for science fiction fans, wouldn't it? Like a, an android writing a novel, wouldn't you want to read that as a science fiction fan? So I think if a machine could like churn out those kinds of stories and some big tech company can make money off of it, then yeah, I wouldn't be surprised about that. The thing is now, and what they mention in the in the article is that it's kind of easy to spot um, things that aren't written by people. Just like I said about the pictures, you can see it in the hands. That's not like, that's an AI generated art piece. And it's kind of easy to spot um, words and like novels and stories and stuff written by them because the AI, the AI is just a step away Hopefully more than one step, but it's, it's not quite us. It's like the uncanny valley again, like it's just, it's close, but it's wrong in some way. So yeah, that's kind of the f future of publishing. Like it's, that's not going away. It's going to be there. If you're putting your writing in a public forum anywhere, it's probably going to be used in that way, whether you like it or not. Um, how, how are we feeling about this? What's the discussion about this? Have, have you had a discussion with any of your friends, peers, other writers, readers? Like, is it something we're worried about, either as consumers or as writers, as artists? Like, I, f I feel still a little bit distant from it, like it's from the AI thing, uh, because it's like, I have no intention of ever using it myself, I wouldn't even know what I would use it for, but it's like, you can't, um, you can't get away from it. I think recently as well, someone entered a an AI written story into a competition and won. And also, oh yeah, I, I just saw on TikTok, there's a whole, or it was on Twitter actually, it came out that um, HarperCollins, which is a huge, uh, like one of the big publishers, is getting their editors to use AI to, I think, generate like bios and blurbs for books, just to like kind of cut corners and save time and stuff and like it's not consensual from the authors you know these the authors who have contracts with contracted their books with HarperCollins like nobody's asking them hey can we 
use AI to generate words for you or generate like editing ideas or whatever. Um, so it's like a that's a scandal now. Um, I don't know exactly where that's going or if, if that's going to get them in trouble or if they're even admitting to it. I don't know how it even came out. I think it was some of the editors themselves sort of shared screenshots of it, uh, which is wild. I kind of thought that like it's not wild that that is happening, but I kind of thought that they would make some kind of statement about it or they would they wouldn't just be trying to do it on the sly as like one of those big publishers, you know? Um, it's strange. So it's it's here, it's happening. We just kind of have to figure out how to deal with it, I guess, but I don't know how. So yeah, um, clearly my mind's muddled with the whole thing. So if, let me know what you think about ghostwriting, about AI in writing, about do you care? Should you care? Should I care? Like, does it really matter in any of these scenarios or only in some of them? Um, is it something you worry about or are you just writing your own stories, dealing with that, reading the books you like and liking them for that? Like, let me know. Let me know because it's definitely interesting to me. So thank you so much for watching. I will be back very soon with a new and interesting, hopefully, video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I shall see you in the next one.